Hey guys, summer chores have come around. Those little things that need to be done. Um, I'm out here in the front today, right now. And I have to deal with this hose that I haven't been able to use. I didn't think I was going to have to use it. And now it's come to the point where I really do need to use it. But it's a, a mess. Specifically, this piece, this is a really great way of connecting two various pieces of hose. Unfortunately, this hose is really thin. So it keeps popping out of it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cheaters way out. I'm going to use some Gorilla Glue. This is not the only chore I have to do today. Oh, see? <laughs> Isn't that delightful? Um, this is not the only chore I have to do today. I'm going to have to uh, I'm gonna get on that blueberry. Poor little thing. As long as that doesn't slip off, it's fine. I really cranked this one down hard. I don't know if it's, I don't think it's actually gonna come off. Gorilla Glue is absolutely amazing, but I gotta, uh, you gotta remember that Gorilla Glue expands. The original Gorilla Glue expands after you put it on whatever you're gonna put it on. So I need to be very careful that it doesn't go inside the little hole. I'm gonna this on there. And this is permanent. This is definitely a permanent fix. I don't think this is, uh, I don't think it actually hardened the last time I used it, so it should be okay. It's fine. Just have to be able to, uh, ah, not get it on my finger. Crap. Yeah, it takes a long time to get it off your hands, so don't let it dry there. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not going to be able to use this, uh, I'm not going to be able to use this hose today, but I might be able to test it out tomorrow. Go, I think, probably do it. Always recap these things. It's like super glue. If you leave it uncapped, for longer than just a few minutes, you're never gonna be able to use the rest of the tube. It's just expensive enough to be really annoying. There we go. Uh, my nice permanent, hopefully, fix to, uh, to my hose problem. Ah! <laughs> ah! Ah, there we go. This one's coming off now. That's good. There we go. I'll just... Oh, poor little insect. There we go. Oh, I can already feel it drying on my fingers. So I guess for lunch today I'm going to have fish and chips flavored with Gorilla Glue. Just to show how tough this Gorilla Glue is, I used it to fix the lid of my garbage can. And uh, that sucker's really going strong. It, it will not come apart. And we do have a rather abusive garbage man. One. 
some more here. Get in there. Get in there. There we go. Close it up. And come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. doesn't work. I don't think it's going to be any biggie because uh, the hose itself was free. But I'd really rather not have to buy another hose in the middle of the season. We're edging towards the end of the season now. And that hopefully is that. Well, let's go take a look at the rest of the front yard, which has actually done very well for itself, huh? I'd actually like to thank Ocean Bay Landscaping. They came out here and cut the grass out here. Look at this. It looks so much prettier now, doesn't it? So much prettier. But these are the beauties. My sunflowers are super happy. Look at you. All these beautiful sunflower seeds that are developing here. And every single one of these has a very nice, very nice flower developing. This one's another one that, uh, this one definitely loves to face the sun. Nasturium is, uh, you know, getting old because I haven't trimmed it at all. So it's developing all its little seeds. I don't care. I like the seeds out here. And, uh, Another spray of antifungal, and we're starting to see the variegation really come out on these leaves. I've decided not to uh, not to trim back a whole lot of these. I'm just going to let them because they look like they're recovering from the fungal uh, treatments and the fungal infestation quite nicely. They're nice and bright now. Uh, another couple of years and this should be able to take another another hard cut if we're still here bachelor buttons a beautiful compliment to sunflowers very nice huh and uh black velvets are kind of hanging in there not really they're a spring they're a spring flower sage is really happy and the time needs a, uh, the time needs a trim, a hard, a hard cut back because it hasn't had enough water because I haven't had the hose to, to water it. And that's it for the front yard. Now let's see about that blueberry, shall we? Well, just a, a tiny bit of an update. Uh, the bok choy has been eaten. And now this is summer savory. Flower babies are doing well. I don't know if they'll uh, make it to adulthood before winter, but I can hope. Come on. These are eggplant babies and they're just starting to grow their new true leaves. Hopefully they won't get chewed to death before they make it. Lots and lots of chamomile. Thank goodness, because I'd really love to make tea out of that. This is what I'm going to work on today. This blueberry here. I'm not sure if you can actually see it, but... This is rust. This is, a, this is a danger to lots of blueberries. And this is... This misshapen blueberry here is what can happen when this is a, an internal fungal infection. It doesn't actually affect the flavor, but it does affect the shape of the blueberries. It also affects how many blueberries that a blueberry can produce. And this one, although it's young, still produce really heavily. I'm going to take all those blueberries off, take all the rusty leaves off, give it a good fungal spraying, and uh, repot it because there's also a massive weed in the middle of it. 
pepper. I was going to turn this pepper into a bonsai, but instead I've actually taken some of the, uh, some of the little ones off the bottom and I'm going to propagate them into new peppers because this has so many little baby flowers here. I just can't take the uh, chance that it will stop producing uh, baby chilies. This chili is going really well, but all I see are flowers. I don't actually see any chilies on it. Um, sneaky oregano, I'm doing fine. Sneaky nasturtium, I'm doing fine. Oh, but here, do you see? Do you see? Right here and way down here, baby ahi sharapita peppers. Hopefully those are not the only ones that appear because I'd love to have dozens, just as many as the flowers that are up are there. Zucchini growing really well. I need to uh I need to trim back some of this junk, give it some more sunshine. Uh, sweet uh, orchard baby corn doing really well. It should actually, it shouldn't get too much higher than this. This should be maybe up to here, maybe up to here. Uh, so maybe six inches higher. It's supposed to be really small with really small sweet ears. Second zucchini, doing fine. Nice and I love the color on their leaves and I like the fact they're not getting eaten by the snails. Bachelor buttons, of course. Bachelor buttons grow like weeds. You don't have to worry about them. Beans, hey. Hey, you guys, look at you. You're beautiful. You're all beautiful. This is definitely going to provide me with enough beans to uh, to restart next year's production. Chard, we had a thinning and I stewed it and it tastes so delicious. Oh, so delicious. Uh, it's almost, almost as good as the stewed collards that I would have grown this year. Except I didn't get to the collards. I think... Oh, that's right. We still have pots over here, don't we? <clears throat> I'm not sure about these babies. Um, they're still very small. Their color is good. Their color is really good. These are uh, the butternut squash. Except this little one right here isn't absolutely loving life. But uh, they aren't just expanding as fast as I think they should and I think that's because they don't have enough food in this particular soil. I am very confused by the watermelon. Maybe it's because we haven't had enough sunshine because this watermelon should be raging out of control too. This soil is brand new soil. I don't know. I don't know what their deal is. What is your deal? Got uh, mm, some eggs, some eggs there. Not too bad though. They're not getting chewed apart. They're nice and sturdy. Oh, you guys, this is actually a butternut squash. I moved it from over there. That is supposed to be an acorn squash, and it's just kind of. Eh, stuck. This, this while it has more sunshine, not sure if it's a great place for squishies and melons. I guess we'll just have to see. Right now, blueberry. Well, I've made a start and I decided instead of letting these cuttings go to waste, I'm going to try to make some starts out of them, which may or may not work, we'll see. But there are still plenty, plenty of things on here that need to be trimmed. And I'm not worried about this thing 
growing back because it grew so fast this summer I couldn't keep up with it. Hmm. Why am I cutting off all the little blueberries instead of just letting them grow? Because they are taking up valuable energy this plant is going to need to get over its its a uh, infestation I'd also like to open up the canopy a little bit. <sighs> Every blueberry I manage to propagate is one I could potentially sell from. Alrighty, well, I've trimmed it down quite a bit. I've gotten all the rusty leaves that I can see, and I have 12 brand new potential blueberry babies. I'm gonna water them. I'm gonna set up to uh, get this monster into uh, fresh soil. All right. those roots. Look at those roots. They've been growing. Oh, I don't have a knife. Dang it. Better go up and get the knife. Alrighty. Got the knife. Right here. I don't want to take a huge amount off it. Just enough. Oh, 
apart a whole lot more than I thought I was gonna because that weed in the middle is just gonna keep growing. This monstrosity thing here. Beast. Ah. Dang it. Come on. You. Uh, heck. Goodness gracious. Definitely didn't come from my garden. This thing came with the plant. And now it's going to be in serious trouble. It's like an inch around. Okay, I'm sorry. This means major surgery, sweetie. I didn't anticipate it, but it's got to happen because I got to get all these. This thing separated here. weed. Ah. There we go. Just Oof. I hate doing this. But Let it stay, it's gonna kill the blueberry. Here, I'll show it to you. It's this gigantic stem right in the middle, that's the weed, and it is all hooked in with everything. Was one of the issues with buying uh, plants from places you don't know completely where it came from. Because uh, these weeds exist in the pot and they grow and grow. There we go. There it is. That's how big the root system was. And you just can't let that stay in a container. You can't. Unfortunately, uh, it's made a absolute wreckage of my my lovely root system, which I'm gonna have to cut even further to make sure it'll survive. So I'm gonna put. layers down. There we go. I'm just uh because I don't have time to let this soil dry. I'll just uh Here. Yep, 
and how far down? Okay, quite a bit more. It does love its current soil, so I'm not going to get rid of it altogether. That would be a that would be a really bad idea. No leaves either. Oh, I'm getting there. Yeah. There. Now I need to add some transfer fertilizer. It's gonna need quite a load of help to grow before winter gets here. Oh, that's better. That's better. There we go. All right. Try to keep out all the leaves because I don't know which leaves are rusty. thing. You've really taken a beating today, haven't you? to get it through its suffering period while it tries to develop some more roots before winter. Take a bow, Blueberry. You made it. Now, the soil that I've just used to transplant a couple of bonsais and uh, repot some, repot the blueberry with, um, a lot of that soil has been used about two or three times. I'm really not willing to push that soil, that potting soil any farther because pretty much all I'm left with is just substrate with a lot of roots and a lot of potential for infection. I don't have the means to actually sterilize soil. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do with it. You'll notice my grass here looks like it's been beaten down. That's on purpose. That is on purpose. Now, I don't know if I'll get to use this area next year or not. I probably won't use it, but I can help create healthy soil with it. So, Prevent from blowing away on the grid. There we go.
Now, when we don't have a lot of tools at our disposal and we have weeds we have to get rid of, it is very good to fold those weeds over. Try to get it in a V pattern, but you know, any folding will do. Stomp on it. Then use, if you have a shovel, use your shovel to cut along the edges and keep folding in. Stomp on it again. Then water it down and stomp on it again. There's a lot of stomping involved, I'm sorry. Then start putting some native bacteria, such as what you'd get from, uh, you know, potting soil with the plants that you've planted, or just some clean soil from your backyard. Start putting that on top. Then you can either, you can either stomp it down. Now, if it starts, if it starts to, this is feeling a little spongy. When it starts to feel a little spongy, you can stop stomping on it. But you have to make sure that it stays fairly moist underneath because this has begun the composting process. These weeds, these dried up weeds down here, and you can see the color change down here, these weeds down here have started to break down. You can see the moisture from where I watered it this morning. Even if the weeds on top look brown. And you can create a bed from this. It is very possible to create a cheap garden bed. Oh, hello there little roly-poly. You're going to help me out, aren't you? very possible to uh, to create a nice bed just with weeds. Yes, you're going to get weeds from the seeds of the plants that have that are underneath. The seeds probably won't die. So yes, in this bed You'll be plucking weeds and you might be pulling weeds for years to come, but you don't have to go out and purchase huge amounts of expensive soil when you can make the weeds do your work for you. If you have time doing this over a couple of years, you can build up enough for a raised bed. Now, next year if I chose, I could line this all with uh, with bedding boxes and then keep filling it up as I went. Or you can put hay bales down. Water the hay bales. The hay bales or straw bales will also break down. And you can plant in those bales. Put a little fertilizer in those bales and those bales are compact enough to actually provide you a good substrate to grow tomatoes chilies, lettuce, uh, pretty much any crop that you want to plant. Right now, I'm just concerned with how healthy the soil is going to be when I leave to give anybody who comes along an opportunity. <laughs>